Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is June 14th, 2022. This is part two of my series, Born of Water. I want to start with John chapter 3 today. John chapter 3, uh, we have gone over a little bit at the beginning of it through verses uh, 1 through 14. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. <clears throat> and Jesus says that you must be born again or you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asks him, how can that be? And Jesus says, amen, amen, or true, truth, truth, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The first part of this, you cannot see the kingdom of God until you have been born of the Spirit. You receive the earnest of the Spirit and you can see the kingdom of God and that's when a lot of people get excited, they become Christians and they go to church. But they never ever become born of water. I've, I've actually heard pastors say before that this is a two-step process, that you're born of water first, that's in the natural. Everyone is born of water, and then you're born of the Spirit so that you can get to heaven. And so, in other words, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born here on earth, and then they're born of the Spirit and get to go to heaven. That's absolutely wrong. It's, it is a natural interpretation which is so typical of, of all of church teaching because the church does not understand the deep things of God. They understand nothing beyond the milk of the word. Jesus is not talking about your natural birth at all in John chapter 3. This series teaches you how to be born of water. We must be born of water or we will never enter the kingdom of God. It's that, it's that serious. You must be born of water or you will not enter the kingdom of God. Now there are scriptures that talk about this in ways. One of them is uh, in Isaiah 12. Verse 3 says, with joy, will, with joy you will draw water from the wells of Yeshua. That's interpreted as the word salvation. Jesus is our salvation. Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. With Joy, you will draw water from the wells of Yeshua. Jesus, Yeshua, is our well of water. How important is this? Let's read 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to I Am in the presence of Eli. He was in, this was the time during the tabernacle of Moses. Israel was now in the land of promise. <clears throat> and the word of I am was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is June 14th, 2022. This is part two of my series, Born of Water. I want to start with John chapter 3 today. John chapter 3, uh, we have gone over a little bit at the beginning of it through verses uh, 1 through 14. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. <clears throat> and Jesus says that you must be born again, 
or you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asks him, how can that be? And Jesus says, amen, amen, or true, truth, truth, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The first part of this, you cannot see the kingdom of God until you have been born of the Spirit. You receive the earnest of the Spirit and you can see the kingdom of God and that's when a lot of people get excited, they become Christians and they go to church. But they never ever become born of water. I've, I've actually heard pastors say before that this is a two-step process, that you're born of water first, that's in the natural. Everyone is born of water, and then you're born of the Spirit so that you can get to heaven. And so, in other words, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born here on earth, and then they're born of the Spirit and get to go to heaven. That's absolutely wrong. It's, it is a natural interpretation which is so typical of, of all of church teaching because the church does not understand the deep things of God. They understand nothing beyond the milk of the word. Jesus is not talking about your natural birth at all in John chapter 3. This series teaches you how to be born of water. We must be born of water or we will never enter the kingdom of God. It's that, it's that serious. You must be born of water or you will not enter the kingdom of God. Now there are scriptures that talk about this in ways. One of them is uh, in Isaiah 12. Verse 3 says, with joy, will, with joy you will draw water from the wells of Yeshua. That's interpreted as the word salvation. Jesus is our salvation. Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. With Joy, you will draw water from the wells of Yeshua. Jesus, Yeshua, is our well of water. How important is this? Let's read 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to I Am in the presence of Eli. He was in, this was the time during the tabernacle of Moses. Israel was now in the land of promise. <clears throat> and the word of I am was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. Verse 2, at that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. This, of course, is a picture of the church whose eyes have grown dim. Eli is the high priest of this time and very, very compromised. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of I Am, where the ark of God was. Then I Am called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And I Am called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Then verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know I am, for the word of I am had not yet been revealed to him. 
has the word of I am been revealed to you? It was revealed to me when I was 21 years old and praise God, it was because it changed my life. I was on a downward path. I had just, I had just um, dropped out of college, dropped out my fourth year of college. But God apprehended me right away and I began to read the Bible. And after reading the Bible for about three months daily, suddenly the word of I am was re revealed to me and it changed my life. It's, uh, not, I was never the same after that because the word of the Lord had been revealed to me then. Once that happens to you, you cannot go back. Verse 8 says, And I am called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that I am was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Most people... If, they, if God speaks, they don't know it's God speaking. Even the high priest, who should have had greater discernment, did not know that I am was calling until the third time that Samuel went in to say, Here I am, you called me. Now let's review Isaiah 55, verse 1. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Remember, you must be born of water, or you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without price. Notice that the water has now turned into wine and milk. Now most people only drink the milk of the word. They cannot eat solid food. Certainly can't drink wine. Wine is strong drink. Then verse 2 of Isaiah 55. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? Okay, now the water has become bread. Why do you spend your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good. Eat water. And delight yourselves in rich food. So now the water has become rich food. So here, just in two verses in Isaiah 55, the water becomes wine, the water becomes milk, the water becomes bread, the water becomes rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. So now, the water is something that we don't take into our mouth, it's something we take in through our ears. You should remember Isaiah 55 verses 1 and 2. Now Hebrews chapter 5. <clears throat> Starting with verse 8. Although well, let's say seven. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God as a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. God disciplines every son that he accepts 
If you do not experience the discipline of God, then you are an illegitimate son. That's what it says in the book of Hebrews. So Jesus offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. It was not easy for him. He suffered tremendously. He was designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Then verse 11, Hebrews 5, 11. Now about this we have much to say. And it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Remember the word, the water, the wine, the milk, but you have to hear, hear it. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God or of the scriptures. You need milk, not solid food. You need milk, not solid food. That's sad, isn't it? The church is fed have been fed a diet of only milk for generations now, for hundreds of years. You need milk, not solid food, for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a baby. <clears throat> Babies can only drink milk. They can't eat solid food. Anyone who has only eaten the milk of God's word is unskilled in the word of righteousness. He is a baby. But solid food, solid food, food, solid food. Isaiah 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Eat water? Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? Why do you waste your time on things that are not the truth? Why do you waste your time on things that are not true bread, true doctrine? Why do you waste your labor for that which does not satisfy spiritual reality? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food Delight yourselves in rich food. Hebrews 5.14 But solid food, doctrine, is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. The church doesn't know the difference between its left hand and its right hand. It doesn't know how to define sin. It doesn't walk away from sin. It indulges in sin. It's always and only one step behind the world's plunge into madness of sin. <clears throat> and now we'll resume back in the book of John where we ended last time. John chapter 6. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. This is not the Passover at the time when Jesus died. This is before that. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get even a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 men in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, notice that Jesus always gives thanks for food. We should do the same. We should thank God for our food, and then we should bless it in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they were glad to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea, that's all the people who had eaten bread and fish, miraculously. On that day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Amen, Amen, or Truth, Truth. I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. You're not seeking me because you saw the signs. You're seeking me because you ate your fill of the loaves. Just like today. If you hear about a church or a place where amazing things are happening, gold dust is falling out of the air, people are laughing uncontrollably, or whatever the thing is, that seems to be a spiritual occurrence that is not in the norm. You get excited and you want to go there. I did it for years. Years. Until 1993. You go there, you want to get or most people, most people want to get the goosebumps. They want to see what's going on. What, what's the, what is the miraculous thing that's happening? And then they want to be able to tell people, oh, did you know about this miracle? Wow. But they're like these people. You didn't, you're not coming because you saw the signs. You're coming because you got your belly full. You got your little dopamine fix. But not because you saw the signs. In other words, you didn't comprehend what was happening. Do you know anyone who can multiply fish and lo a few fish and loaves and feed 5,000 men and whoever else was with them? You didn't, you're not coming to me because you saw the signs. 
you still don't have a clue that I'm anything special. I'm just rabbi. You just want to make me king by force. You want to, you want to put off the yoke of tyranny. <clears throat> That's what's happening today. We have a multitude of Christians who want to elect their next Christian leader, thinking that that Christian leader is going to change the world or change their government or their nation for the better. It's not going to happen. It will never happen. You can't fix it. We can't fix it. It is corrupt to the core. The foundations have been destroyed. You cannot fix this government. You can't fix any government in the world. So what do people do? They're Christians, so they somebody pretends they're a Christian, makes a few proclamations that you think they're going to do something good. And just keep Trump in mind as you consider this, because Trump said a lot of things that people thought he was going to do good things, and he never did one of those good things. Chemtrails never stopped the whole four years that Trump was in office. Remember that. Instead, you had people out there saying, oh, he's dropping hydroxychloroquine in the chemtrails when COVID hit in 2020. He's protecting us. He's going to save us with the chemtrails. No, he never did. It continued. Whatever they do with chemtrails, weather manipulation and other things, whatever they do continued the entire time Trump was president. But there's people now, Christians still working for Trump, and they're going to work to get him elected again in 2024. You watch. His wound will then be healed. And then, you think you have trouble now? Wait until then. You didn't come to me because you saw the signs. You came because your belly was full. You came because... You're, you're trying to get this guy elected because you think it's going to make something better for this world that you live in. That you're not going to have to take the jab. That you're not going to have to suffer through the evils that are coming. There is no political salvation. And Jesus, the last thing he wanted was to be made king because his kingdom is not of this world. So, Christians, rather than spending the time being birthed by the word, washing themselves by the word, by water, rather than washing with water, rather than changing their hearts from the inside, they spend all their time working on the outside, trying to get somebody into office that's going to make their life better in the natural, better in the physical. You didn't come to me because you saw the signs. And the same is true now for Christians. You don't come to Christ because you see the signs. You don't come to Christ because you know that he is the word made flesh. But you're coming for your spiritual goosebumps, for your dopamine, for a natural reason, and not for the spiritual reality of entering a spiritual kingdom. So let's continue reading here. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, amen, amen, I say to you. You were seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. You got your bellies full. Do not work for the food that perishes. That's natural food. Do not work for the food that perishes, but work for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? 
But see, that's really the wrong question, isn't it? That's not what Jesus said. He said, work for food that endures. Well, okay, how do we work? So they're asking, how do we work? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Ooh. Okay, have you ever considered that to be work? Yes, it's hard work to continue in faith and continue believing in the one that he sent. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Now, isn't that crazy? What sign do you do? What do you mean, what sign do I do? I just fed 5,000 people with a few loaves and fish. What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, amen, amen. Truth, truth, listen to what I say. I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. <clears throat> well, they don't get it, of course. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Okay, so Jesus continues to talk. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Why? Because he is the water of life. He is the bread of life. He, we who come to him will never hunger for truth, will never thirst for truth because he is the truth. So now remember, each chapter of the book of John, we saw, first we saw the introduction of the word in chapter 1, then the miracle of the water turned to wine in chapter 2, and then you must be born of water in chapter 3, and then chapter 4, Jesus talking to the woman by the well, saying, you should ask me for water. <clears throat> and then the miracle of healing by the water in chapter 5. And now we have, rather than a focus on water, we have a focus on bread. But remember Isaiah 55. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come by and eat. Verse 2, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? So the waters become bread. That's what we see now here in chapter 6. Jesus now is saying, I am the bread of life. So the waters have become bread. <clears throat> Verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. For I... I am both the water and the bread. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. Well, we know that that is going to be fulfilled. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. If you look to Jesus and continue looking, if you really believe in Jesus, 
then you will eat his words. You will eat his bread. You will drink his water. If you really believe in him, you will come to him for food. That's what he's saying. I am the bread from heaven. Come to me. Listen to me. Why won't you listen to me? How many Christians never, ever, ever read Christ's words? They go to church maybe once a week and expect that they're going to get the word from the pastor. It's not going to happen. You cannot fill yourself with oil. The word becomes oil. The word becomes the spirit within you. You cannot have oil in your vessels. You cannot have the spirit of God in your vessel. I'm going to take water to justice. Unless you fill yourself with the word. That is the only way. That is the only way that you can have oil in your vessel. And that's why there's so many virgins, foolish virgins, who when Christ finally comes, will say to people who have oil, give us some of your oil. No, I can't give it to you. It took me a lifetime to have oil in my vessel. I went daily to buy oil. I prayed for oil. I prayed for water. I prayed for bread daily. I prayed for eyes to see and ears to hear every day of my life for 44 years. I can't give you what now is within me. The water has become oil. The water has become spirit. And if you don't have that within yourself, you're not ready. And you will not be raptured. You will not go into the marriage feast. That's what the parable in Matthew 25 is all about. So the last thing Jesus said was, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say I've come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, don't grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. They will all be taught by God. Are you taught by God? God is my teacher. I only know what I know because God is my teacher. My doctrine is not my own. Just like Jesus said, my doctrine is not my own. I only say what my what I hear my father saying I only do what I see my father doing that's the way every true Christian should be and every Christian who's going to make it every Christian who enters the kingdom of God will have the water within himself <clears throat> he will be filled with oil because he diligently bought water for a long time. It is written in the prophets and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So <clears throat> that's how I came to Christ. I was learning from the Father directly from the scriptures 
And when I understood that the scriptures had been written by God, when the word of the Lord was revealed to me, my first response, I still remember, was then I better do what it says. I was a sinner. I was not walking in the way of God. But as soon as I knew it was the word of God, then I said, I better do what it says. If you don't do what it says, then you don't believe. You still walking in sin? Can't get out of sin? So because you're not in the word. You depend on other people for the word. You don't get the word for yourself. And I'm talking to someone now that I deeply love. You always get your word from someone else. You never, ever get the word for yourself, and therefore you don't have oil within yourself. <clears throat> you have to get the word for yourself. You have to eat. You have to go and buy yourself. It doesn't cost you any money. It only costs your life. Yeah, it costs your life. It's a change of life. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. He's talking about himself, of course. Truly, truly, I say to you, Amen, Amen. Truth, truth. Listen to me. Whoever believes in me has eternal life. Whoever believes in me has eternal life. That's why that doctrine is there. It is just faith. And if you really believe, you have eternal life. I am the bread of life. John 6, 48, I am the bread of life. If you believe in me, you will eat me. You will eat my bread. You will eat my words. <clears throat> you will drink my water. You will drink my blood. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. That means you will have eternal life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, <clears throat> if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Whoa. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, amen, amen. Truth, truth, I say to you, truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Jesus is not here in the flesh anymore, is he? Of course you can't eat his natural flesh or drink his natural blood. And of course he didn't mean that, as we'll see very clearly in a few more verses. <clears throat> but what we do have are his words in both the Old and the New Testament. That's how we eat his flesh and drink his blood by taking his word into us. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever, true, true drink, not natural, true. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. This is how you abide in Christ, that you must drink his blood and eat his flesh. You must feed upon his word. That is the bread of life. The bread 
the water of life, the water that turns into wine, the water that becomes oil in our vessels, the Holy Spirit within us. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. <clears throat> this is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. So it's not like manna. It's not natural food for our bodies. This is spiritual food. Whoever feeds on this bread, me, will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Wow. When many of the disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? Indeed. No one has listened to it. Most of the church has not listened to it. Most people throughout 2,000 years have not listened to it. <clears throat> Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? They got to see that. They did. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. See, that's the key. We are in the flesh. We have a hard time thinking outside of the flesh. When our flesh hurts, it's difficult to do spiritual things. But we need to do spiritual things anyway. It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. My words are spirit. When I said you must eat my flesh and drink my blood, I spoke spiritual words to you. Of course, I don't want you to eat my flesh and drink my blood. It's against the law. It's against God's law to drink blood to begin with, much less cannibalism. Of course, I don't mean that naturally. Just like when I said, if your eye causes you to sin, pick it out. Better for you to enter life with one eye. I didn't mean for you to pull your, gouge your eye out or to cut your hand off if your hand caused you to sin. My words are spiritual. My words are spiritual and they are life. That's why when you take my word into you, it brings eternal life. If you truly believe me, if you really, really believe in me, then you will listen to my word. It's, evident, it's evidence that you don't really believe me because you don't listen to my word. How many people can you say that to who say that they're Christians? Most Christians are not Christians. <clears throat> they don't believe in Christ because they don't listen to his word. If they believed in him, they would listen to his word. You didn't come to me because you saw the signs. You came to me because your fancies were tickled. Your dopamine was excited. We cannot enter the kingdom of God unless we are born of water and the Spirit. <clears throat> Jesus is the water of life. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is our food. His words are our food. We can only know spiritual things if we know the Word of God. <clears throat> it is the Spirit who gives life. <clears throat> the flesh counts for nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. 
But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away too? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Lord, to whom shall we go? Don't look elsewhere. Don't follow New Age teachers. Don't follow Buddha. Don't follow Krishna. <clears throat> don't follow Muhammad. Follow Christ. None of those other religious teachers were the Word made flesh. Jesus Christ is called the stumbling stone for a reason. It's because everyone stumbles over the truth of who Jesus is. He's not just a good teacher. <clears throat> As some famous psychologist who travels all around must think he is. Peterson, Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is just another New Age false prophet who uses the words of Christ in vain. So he breaks the fourth commandment. Jesus is not just a good teacher. He is the teacher. He is the truth. He is the water of life. He is the bread of life that came from heaven. He is the word that became flesh. The word. It is the word that is our bread. It is the word that is our water. Unless the word of the Lord is revealed to you, you cannot know the Lord. <clears throat>